Hi, I am going to show you how to use your new Elite Eat to Perform Trend Sheet. If you've been upgraded, your data should be transferred over into your upgraded trend sheet. If you're brand new, you won't have any data yet. So I am going to start from a sheet that has no data. First thing that you want to do on the Start Here tab is look at the FAQ found here in the blue box and the FAQ found here in the purple box. These are two separate fact sheets. One is basic use of the features on the trend sheet and the other one is specific to the My Fitness Pal automatic data load feature. Next you want to type something about you. Things that might be helpful to your coaches as far as knowing who you are, the type of things that you do, whether your job is sedentary or very active. These kind of details help us make decisions on your macros and help us give you better advice. Also, if you have your permalink to your Facebook post, please put it here in the red box. And we will be using your email address um, for certain features of the trend sheet. So if you could please type it in there for us, that would be super handy. We're not gonna spam you just because that email address is there. Once you're done reading the FAQ and filling out the boxes on the Start Here tab, you can come over to your Trend tab and we'll get started there. First thing that you want to do is, if you don't already have data in here and you're starting with a brand new sheet, you want to select the date that you want your sheet to start on. You can set this date to any time frame and all the dates below it will change. So if I want to start on, say, July 15th, I change that date and all of the dates below it will adjust. Only change that first date, please. Uh, male or female, select, input your age, input your height, input your MyFitnessPal link. It is very important that this link has the food slash diary as part of the URL along with your username. If you're not sure what your username is, you can't remember. Go to My Fitness Pal and look at the very top where it says hi and then it gives you your, your username. So grab your username from there, come back to your trend sheet and put it in your link. If you use an activity tracker, find the link for us to view that information and put it here. And if you keep a training log in the forum or anywhere else, put that link there. You can also start your My Fitness Pal log from a date different than your trend sheet starts. So if you've already got data in your trend sheet and you want to start the automatic pulling on a different date than your trend sheet starts, just set that date there. Um, so if your trend sheet starts on July 1st and you've already got data in there and you don't want to start pulling until July 15th, change that date like that. Be sure to input your weight. You do not need to update BMI as that is automatically calculated for you. Type in your body fat if you know it. If you're going to miss some days capturing your weight, just put the date of the previous day in there or leave it blank. That's fine. Same thing with body fat. If you don't know it, that's fine. If you find it out on a particular day, input it on that day, but just leave the rest of the days blank. You're not going to need to calculate calories or input calories. That's automatically calculated for you. My Fitness Pal Pool is going to fill in carbs, fats, protein, and sodium for you. Make sure under your macro goal column that you only use super high, medium, or low. You can also use abbreviations of them such as S, H, M, M, or L. So super, just like that. If you do something like high slash medium, it's not going to know what goal to pull in because it's impossible for you to follow two separate goals on one day. Okay, so that'll end up causing the graph to not pull over a goal. Pick the closest match. This is not what you actually hit as far as macros go on a day, it is what your actual goal was so that we can see 
whether you are constantly over or under or what's happening there. Okay, so fill those in. Calorie, if you use an activity tracker and you track calories, sleep, steps, and water, input that information. If you do not track that, that's fine. Just leave those values blank. Water, you can display it in milliliters or ounces. That's fine. Um, just indicate that for us so that we know what we're looking at. So if you're milliliters and you've got an entry of 2,300 in there, we know you didn't drink 2,300 ounces of water. That's your trend tab. Next is your workout log. This is just for you. This is, you do not have to fill this out, but it's handy for you and for us if all of your information is in the same place. Type of workout. We just put basic types of workout in here. If you slide your sheet over to the right, there's an extra list and you're more than welcome to add extra things like swimming, maybe hill, sprints, whatever kind of things that you do, you're welcome to add those. And then what happens is you'll see those in your list. Total sets and distance, that's not going to apply to swimming unless you do some type of maybe intervals or meter separations for that. You can say you did five sets of 500 meter swimming, whatever. Total time, total time for your workout. If you do CrossFit and you have a strength session and a Metcon session and you want to keep those separate, um, specify strength, how much time you spent doing strength work, and then on your workout two columns, say CrossFit or add Metcon, and let us know how much time it took for that. This is basically yours to be creative with. On your TDEE tab, Keep in mind that information in here is used to pull your macro goals into the graphs. So this needs to be accurate um, and it needs to be correct. And it only needs to apply to information that you've input on the trend tab. So if your sheet starts on 7-1, you do not need to put macros before 7-1 into this sheet unless for some reason you want to have a record for it. But if your macros change throughout the coming year, you're going to have used up space and may not have room for your macros in your sheet. So start your macros July 1. I'm just going to put in some test data here just so you can see. Always type these in. Never, never, never cut and paste in your trend sheet. Never delete rows. Never insert rows. This is going to potentially mess up your sheet, mess up your graphs. Things are going to go crazy. So always just type data in or delete your pieces of data. Now that I've input my macros, um, if macros change at some point and I get something new, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down. So say on July 15th my macros changed, I'll say 7-1 to 7-14 because dates cannot overlap. You cannot start a set of macros on the same day that you ended previous set of macros, so it'll never be accurate. So let's type in my old set. Okay, and here, 7.15, I will have started a new set. Maybe he took away some carbs. Maybe he gave me a little bit more fat. I can only hope so I can eat more bacon. Okay, so this is what it needs to look like. Select a goal. It doesn't have to be exact. If you want fat loss and recomposition, type a little note underneath. Or maybe you want fat loss and muscle gain. You can type that in there, but what is your primary? What is most important to you? You might want to lose fat and gain muscle, but which of those is priority? Whichever one is priority is the one that you want to select from here. You can also adjust these goals if you're trying to hit 
eight hours of sleep, you can adjust this to 48. If you're only trying to reach 6,000 steps a day, you can change that. If you're trying to get 72 ounces of water, you can change that, and you can also specify milliliters here. Sodium goal, whatever you're trying to stay under for that day. These values, number of meals on workout days, number of meals on rest days. These apply to your meal timing and your meal templates. If you only eat five meals on workout days, change that. Some people only eat four meals on rest days, maybe you eat five. Okay? There's your TDEE tab. There's also a progress tab. If you want to keep track of your measurements and you want to maybe possibly input photos, you can do that as well. In order to insert photos, what you'll do is you'll click on insert, you'll say image, you'll find the image on your computer, and it will add it. You'll need to resize it and slide it over and put it over top of this box and stuff like that. You also might want to put input photo details, so maybe add in here the date the photo was taken, anything else that you think might be important that you want to keep track of for that photo. That is your trend sheet. And let's get started on the My Fitness Pal data tool. The first time that you run this, you're going to want to click on load data and check MFP data now. What is usually going to happen, I've already given it permissions, but you're going to typically see a permissions box that asks you to allow Google to manage your files and manage this sheet for you. This is so that data that's pulled in sometimes is not actually updated immediately because it's pulling it from a different site. So that can take time. So Google wants to be able to manage this behind the scenes so that it can populate your sheet when you're not even looking at it. So this is extremely important and very helpful. So you're going to want to allow all of those permissions. You can see copies of those screens in the MFP FAQ page. Um, you'll note that this says my fitness pal data is loading. You may see zero values until the load is complete. This could take several minutes and data will continue loading even if you close your sheet. As long as you gave it permissions, it will do that. You will get this message if you're pulling more than five days at a time. You'll see that it just displayed a finished script message and magically there is your data. It's only pulling from the 15th forward because we told it the 15th. After you've run it for the very first time and given it permissions, then you'll be able to use the sidebar button to pull your data. You click on the button, it shows you that it's working, it tells you that there's no new records to pull, try again tomorrow. You tell it okay. What you'll notice is that it only pulled up to July 27th and today is the 28th. The reason it does that is because you're still working on today and it doesn't always update after the fact. So if it pulls today in the middle of the day and you make changes to your log, it may not pull those, those changes in. So we want to get July 28th on July 29th. If you don't go into your sheet regularly, you can come in and update it once a week if you'd like, if that's easier for you. But in order to keep track of your weight and your body fat and all your other details, it might be easier just to access your sheet once a day. Meal timing, meal template, and all of your graphs, keep in mind that these are never to be touched as far as changing data, um, inputting information, all of that stuff. All of this data is pulled from all of your, your trend and TDEE tabs, so there's nothing that you need to enter in here and nothing that you need to input. What you'll notice, though, is that the data that has been pulled from my fitness pal, none of my goals are, pro are pulling over. And the reason for that is I have not input any macro goals for those days yet. So I will go over here and I will input some goals for those days.
All right, and if I go back to the graph, you can see that it pulled those goals over, and now I can see I was way over, I was way under, I was actually on target. But now, with Trend Sheet Elite, you can see those colors on your actual Trend tab, and you don't have to go over to your graph. Though the graphs are really, really helpful, and you do want to check those out every once in a while. That is all that I have for your brand new Elite Trend Sheet. I hope that you love it as much as we do.